Playing you the pop music you love here on BOA1. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30 minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Coming up on the program, Katie Weaver has a story on a new Beatles record produced with the help of artificial intelligence. Gregory Stockel reports on Reddit users who are protesting the platform. Faith Perlow answers a question about the difference between award and reward. Later, we listen to part three of Benito Sereno by Herman Melville. But first... Beatles co-founder Paul McCartney said this week that artificial intelligence has recaptured the voice of former Beatles member John Lennon from old recordings. Lennon was murdered in 1980. Music that includes Lennon's voice from the past will become what McCartney calls the last Beatles record. The 80-year-old artist spoke to the BBC. He said the AI technology was used to separate the band members' voices from background sounds in an old recording. Film director Peter Jackson was making a documentary series about the band at the time. The series, The Beatles Get Back, came out in 2021. McCartney told BBC Radio that Jackson was able to separate Lennon's voice from the musical sounds in the recording. He could separate them with AI. He'd tell the machine, that's a voice, this is a guitar, lose the guitar. He added, we were able to take John's voice and get it pure through this AI, so then we could mix the record as you would do. McCartney did not identify the name of the demo song that Jackson used for the process, but the BBC and others said it was likely to be an unfinished 1978 love song by Lennon called Now and Then. The demo was included on a cassette with the words For Paul. The BBC reported that McCartney had gotten the cassette from Lennon's wife, Yoko Ono. McCartney described AI technology as kind of scary but exciting. Last year, the same technology permitted McCartney to sing a virtual duet with Lennon. The performance took place at the Glastonbury Festival in Britain. Holly Herndon is an artist with a doctorate in composition from Stanford University in California. She used AI machine technology on her latest album, 2019's Proto. She suggested that the Beatles recording was likely created using a process called source separation. Source separation has become easier to do with machine learning, Herndon said. The process lets a user take a voice from a recording and isolate it, so that it can be paired with new music, she explained. That differs from a deep fake vocal. A deep fake is an entirely new vocal line, she said. It comes from a machine learning model trained on old vocal lines, Herndon said. 
McCartney is set to open a show later this month at the National Portrait Gallery in London of his private photographs. He took them during the early days of the Beatles at the start of Beatlemania, when the band rose to worldwide fame. I'm Katie Weaver. Reddit is a social media website where people with common interests can have conversations by posting comments, videos, and images. Posts are grouped into communities called subreddits based on different subjects. Thousands of popular Reddit communities, including groups about technology, gaming, and music, locked out their users recently in protest. People who organize the communities, called moderators, are protesting the company's plan to charge for access to its data. Starting next month, Reddit said third-party app developers, people who make apps but do not work for Reddit, will have to pay for its Application Programming Interface, or API. It is a programming system that permits a data provider and end user to communicate with each other. Reddit plans to charge developers that require higher usage limits 24 cents for every 1,000 API calls, or less than $1 per user every month. One such third-party app is the Apollo app. It is popular among Reddit users as a way to get content from the official Reddit page. Apollo said that with their current usage, the charges would cost more than $20 million a year, and the developer added that the costly charges have made it impossible to continue offering the service. Christian Selig, the creator of the Apollo app for Reddit, said that the service will close on June 30th. One of the reasons that Reddit is making the change is Generative Artificial Intelligence, or AI. Generative AI can create new content, like images, videos, music, text, or other forms of data. Conversations on Reddit have a lot of data that can be used to train generative AI tools, such as ChatGPT. While some of this data can be collected in an unstructured way, Reddit's API makes it easier for companies to directly find and collect the data. Reddit chief executive Steve Huffman told the New York Times in April that Reddit's data is really valuable, and he said he does not want to give all of that value to some of the largest companies in the world for free. Thousands of subreddits, including r slash music, r slash gaming, r slash science, and r slash today I learned, are protesting the move. They all have more than 30 million followers. Unlike most other social media services, Reddit is heavily dependent on community moderators who police their subreddits for free to deal with offensive or illegal content and the moderators planned a blackout during which their pages will go private. That means millions of users will be left without access to those communities. I'm Gregory Stockel.
Hi, Faith. Welcome back to the show. What is today's topic for Ask a Teacher? Hi, Dan. Today we are answering a question from Lee in China about the difference between the words award and reward. Has someone ever given you an award? Yes, I've been in dance competitions and I've won several awards. The last award I won, I actually tied in second place with another dancer, and the prize was a sparkly crown. But the judges only had one crown, so I was a good sport. We say, like I was a team player, and I let the other dancer have the crown. So you just went home without your prize? Yes, I went home without my prize. But eventually, they sent me another crown through the mail. So I have a question for you, Dan. How do you reward yourself after a long day or week? For example, I like to reward myself after a long week with some ice cream. What about you? I definitely like to reward myself with good food too. Probably a chocolate chip cookie or two. Definitely something sweet. That also sounds nice. Thanks for having me back on the show, Dan. Thanks for sharing another story with us, Faith. Now let's listen to this week's Ask a Teacher. Hello. This week on Ask a Teacher, we will answer a question about the difference between award and reward. I am Lee from China. I have been listening to the VOA Learning English podcast. For more than one year, I have benefited a lot from your program. Can you clarify the meaning of award and reward? I'm always confused about the two words. Best regards, Lee. Thanks for writing to us, Lee. Award and reward have similar meanings. They both can be different parts of speech, nouns, and verbs. They are something you get for your behavior, but there are major differences. Let's look more deeply at each word. An award is a noun. It is something valuable that is given, like a prize to someone for their accomplishments. Awards are usually given by someone to someone else. The student received an award from the teacher. For not missing any school days. As a verb, award means to give someone something, like a prize or money for an accomplishment. The judges awarded first place to the dance group. In the area of law, award has slightly different meanings. As a verb, award means to give an official judgment. Of an amount or sum of money, as a noun, award is the amount of money the court or judge decides. The judge awarded money to the victims. The award totaled two point five million dollars. Let's move on to reward. A reward is a benefit given to someone. In exchange for a certain behavior or action, the reward for all the students passing the test was an ice cream party. There is a five hundred dollar reward for returning the lost dog. Reward as a verb means to give someone a reward for their actions or behavior. I rewarded my cat with some fish. After he did a trick, sometimes you do not need anyone to reward you. You can reward yourself. Victoria rewarded herself with a weekend trip to the countryside after a hard work week. Remember, award is based on accomplishments, and reward is based on behaviors or actions. Please let us know if these explanations and examples have helped you, Lee.
What question do you have about American English? Send us an email at learningenglish at voanews.com. And that's Ask a Teacher. I'm Faith Perlow. Today, we complete the story Benito Sereno, written by Herman Melville. As we told you in earlier parts of our story, rebel slaves seized the ship San Dominic off the coast of Chile. They killed many of its officers and crew. The captain, Benito Sereno, was ordered to sail to Senegal, but first he was forced to take the ship to the lonely island of Santa Maria, near the southern end of Chile. There it could safely get water and supplies for the long, dangerous voyage to Africa. At the island, the rebels were surprised and frightened when they found an American ship anchored in the harbor. It also had stopped for water. Many of the rebels wanted to sail away, but their leader, Babo, opposed it. They had little food and water and could not go far. Babo created a story to keep anyone from suspecting that the Spanish vessel was in the hands of rebels and that its captain was a prisoner. At first, Babo seemed successful. The captain of the American ship, Amasa Delano, visited the San Dominic. He suspected nothing, although he was surprised by the general disorder on board. He also could not understand the strange behavior of its captain, Benito Sereno. Later incidents, however, began to worry him. Captain Delano grew more and more suspicious. At one time, he even feared that his life might be in danger. Twice, he caught the Spanish captain and his servant, Babo, with their heads together, whispering like two conspirators. It made Captain Delano wonder, were they plotting to kill him? and seize his ship? Who were these men? Cutthroats? Pirates? Captain Delano grew nervous. Then he was happy to see his whale boat off in the distance. It was returning with supplies for the Spanish ship. The sight of his boat calmed him. It made his suspicions and fear quickly disappear. He felt foolish for having had such dark thoughts. Now, here is Shep O'Neill with the rest of our story, Benito Sereno. Captain Delano went down to Captain Sereno's cabin to cheer him up and say goodbye. Better and better, Don Benito, he said as he entered the cabin. Your troubles will soon be over. The American invited the Spanish captain to come aboard his boat for a cup of coffee. Sereno's eyes brightened, but then the light in them died. He shook his head and said he could not accept the invitation. Captain Delano was offended. He was about to withdraw when Don Benito rose from his chair and took Delano's hand. The Spaniard's hand shook, and he was too excited to speak. Delano pulled his hand away and turned, 
climbing back to the deck. His face was troubled. Captain Delano could not understand Don Benito's actions. One minute, the Spaniard was warm and polite. Then, just as quickly, cold and hostile. Captain Delano asked himself, Why did he refuse to join me? Why is he so unfriendly? Captain Delano got to the deck and was about to step down into his boat when he heard his name. To his surprise, Don Benito was calling, coming quickly toward him. Captain Delano was pleased and turned back to meet him. Don Benito warmly took his hand with more energy and emotion than he had ever shown. But his excitement seemed too much for him, and he could not speak. Babo then came between the two men and put his arm around Don Benito to support him. Clearly, he wanted to end the meeting between the two captains. Walking between the two men, Babo went with them to the walkway. Don Benito would not let go of Captain Delano's hand. He held it tightly across his servant's body. Soon, they were standing by the ship's side, looking down into the American boat. Its crew turned up their wondering eyes. Captain Delano did not know what to do as he waited for Don Benito to let go of his hand. He wanted to step down into his boat, but Don Benito still firmly held his hand. Then, in an excited voice, the Spaniard said, I can go no further. Here I must say goodbye. Farewell, my dear, dear Don Amasa. Go, go. And he tore his hand loose. Go, and God protect you better than he did me. Go, Don Amasa, my best friend. Captain Delano was deeply moved. He would have stayed for another minute or so, but he caught the eye of Babo. It seemed to say, This is bad for Don Benito's health. And so he quickly took the short step down into his boat with the continuing farewells of Don Benito, who stood rooted at the ship's side. Captain Delano sat down in the back of his boat, gave Don Benito a last salute, and ordered his men to push off. The boat began to move. Suddenly, Don Benito sprang over the side and came down at Delano's feet, and he kept shouting toward the Spanish ship. His cries were so wild that no one could understand him. An American officer asked, What does this mean? Captain Delano turned a cold smile upon Captain Sereno and said he neither knew nor cared. It seems, he added, that the Spaniard has taken it into his head to give his people the idea that we want to kidnap him. Or else, and suddenly Captain Delano shouted, Watch out for your lives! He saw Babo the servant on the rail above with a dagger in his hand. He was ready to jump. What followed happened so quickly that Captain Delano could not tell one incident from another. They all came together in one great 
blur of violent action and excitement. As Babo came down, Captain Delano flung Don Benito aside and caught the rebel leader, pulling the dagger from his hand. He pushed Babo firmly down in the bottom of the boat, which now began to pick up speed. Then Babo, with his one free hand, pulled a second dagger from his clothes and struck at Captain Sereno. Captain Delano knocked it from his hand. Now he saw everything clearly. Babo had leaped into the whale boat, not to kill him, but to kill Captain Sereno. For the first time, he understood the mysterious behavior of Don Benito, a prisoner under sentence of death. He looked back at the Spanish ship and got a clear picture of what its captain had escaped. On board the San Dominique, the shouting rebels were raising their axes and knives in a wild revolt. They stopped some of the Spanish sailors from jumping into the sea. A few, however, jumped, while two or three who were not quick enough went hurrying up the topmost wood arms. Captain Delano signaled to his ship, ordering it to get its guns ready. When the whale boat reached his ship, Captain Delano asked for ropes. He tied Babo and had him pulled up on deck. A small boat was quickly sent out to pick up three Spanish sailors who had jumped from Captain Sereno's ship. Captain Delano asked Don Benito what guns the rebels had. He answered that they had none that could be used. In the first days of the rebellion, a cabin passenger, now dead, had destroyed the few guns there were. The Americans fired six shots at the San Dominique, but the rebel ship moved out of reach. Small boats were armed and lowered. Captain Delano ordered his men into them, and they moved out to capture the rebel ship. The boats caught up with the San Dominique when it was nearly night. But the moon was rising, and the gunners were able to see where they were shooting. The rebels had no bullets, and they could do nothing but yell. Many of the rebels were killed, and the San Dominique was captured. After an investigation, Babo was found guilty of stealing a ship and of murder, and was hanged. Captain Benito Sereno never was well again, and he soon died. So ended the terrible story of the slave revolt aboard the slave ship, the San Dominique. And that's our program for today. Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. 